bahasa Indo itu capek mikir gitu. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Mako Karen. Welcome back to my channel. So as you guys can tell by the title, today I'm going to be talking about my story. I mentioned in my previous video that I was going to make more content that is according to my own interests and not necessarily dictated by the trends. In the end, what I want to do with my channel is to create meaningful content that would inspire all of you guys out there who are watching to live positively. But how I got to that is another is a whole story and it involves my entire life so here is me telling you guys a little bit about myself so you guys also know a little bit about the person behind the camera also to make it more interesting because i feel like it's a little boring if you guys just kind of sit down and listen to me talk i'm gonna be talking about my life in two different languages so i'm gonna be alternating indonesian and english and i'm not doing this to brag about it at all because my indonesian sucks guys i've lived here in America for 15 years but I want to do this so I can practice my Indonesian and I feel like it's a nice little segue because there was definitely a point in my life where I didn't want to practice my Indonesian I feel like that kind of ties into the whole message of my story in that I have changed and I want to inspire others who go in the same direction I am talking too much let's just get into the video I hope you guys enjoy okay ini bagian ini aku mau ngomong bahasa Indo tapi aku tuh dengerin aku sendiri sama aku tuh kayak cringe banget. Jadi tolong maaf ya kalau bahasa Indo aku tuh ada aksen aku udah, aku juga udah dengerin aksennya. Maaf juga kalau ada kata-kata atau kalimat yang agak kaku atau apa gitu kayak aku bilang, aku mau latihan. So tolong maafin, maklumin Jadi awalnya awal cerita Karen aku lahir di Jakarta jadi aku tuh semua keluarganya masih di Indo sampai sekarang aja semuanya masih di Indo aku sempet sekolah di Jakarta aku pernah ikut TK TKA sama TKB terus habis itu masuk kelas 1 SD aku pindah ke Amrik pas di tengah-tengah kelas 1 SD terus aku mulai, aku lanjut kelas 1 di Amrik nah waktu aku pindah ke sini aku tuh nggak tahu bahasa Inggris sama sekali nggak bisa ngerti temen, nggak bisa ngerti PR nggak ngerti guru Pokoknya susah banget deh Aku sampai mesti nyontek sama murid yang di sebelah yang duduk di sebelah aku Waktu kita ada ulangan spelling gitu Jadi gara-gara itu aku tuh stres banget Kayaknya gara-gara stres itu aku ada yang namanya separation anxiety Separation anxiety tuh lumayan wajar sih di, di anak kecil yang seumur itu Tapi aku punya itu kayaknya beneran Um, termasuk parah soalnya setiap pagi aku sampai rasanya kayak enek banget kayak nggak mau sekolah jadi akibatnya aku nggak mau misah sama orang tua aku tapi karena mami aku lumayan rajin jadi mamam itu suka bawa koko aku sama aku ke perpustakaan jadi aku tuh sering baca buku dalam bahasa Inggris gara-gara itu sama mungkin juga gara-gara lingkungan aku tuh semuanya pada ngomong bahasa Inggris guru bahasa Inggris, PR bahasa Inggris, semuanya bahasa Inggris jadi aku setelah satu tahun udah mulai lancar karena aku udah lancar, aku jadi mulai suka dengerin lagu-lagu bahasa Inggris sama nonton film-film bahasa Inggris waktu aku kecil itu paling Paling suka itu yang namanya High School Musical Nih ya, bentar ya, aku kasih tahu klip waktu aku kecil Iya <laughs> gitu, aku suka joget-joget, suka nari Sama liatin High School Musical kayak gitu Aku baru mulai ada impian mau jadi bintang film sama jadi penyanyi So yeah, that was the beginning of my life. After that, I basically just went to school like a normal American kid. I went to elementary school, I went to junior high, and then I went to high school all here in the United States. At this point of my life, I had no Indonesian friends like at all. However, at home, I was taught strictly Indonesian values. For example, I always spoke Indonesian to my parents at home. To this day, it's a little weird if I speak to my parents in English. And I think a reason for that is because when we were young, when me and my brother had our young impressionable minds, whenever we spoke English, my parents would actually block their ears and they'd be like, Nggak ngerti, nggak ngerti, ngomong bahasa Indo They would go like that, so then me and my brother would switch to Indonesian So I think because of that, we just got used to speaking Indonesian around the house As you guys can tell, even with that attempt, I'm still not 100% fluent in the language yet And other than the language, I also kind of abided 
uh, abided, abided is not a word. I still abided by traditional Indonesian values. So for example, I always call my brother by the title Koko instead of just his name. Even though he's only like 359 days older than me, I still refer to him as an older brother. And then also when I'm speaking to my parents, I would refer to myself in third person. I, don't, I feel like that's an Indonesian thing. So for example, my childhood nickname is Keke. So when I would go to school, I would be like Keke ke sekolah dulu ya instead of aku ke sekolah dulu ya which really sounds weird to me. And then I also ate Indonesian food all the time because my mom cooks and she cooks so much good Indonesian food. So I would eat that every single day. So I grew up eating really good spicy food and I can tolerate spice pretty well if I do say so myself. And then also my family and I would go back to Indonesia often to visit the rest of my family because the rest of my family are there. And honestly, we enjoy it every time we go but yeah so i had that contrast right between my external environment at school and my internal environment at home in my opinion it's not an even 50 50 split i want to say like 75 25 my external environment is so much more pervasive um um omnipotent see i don't even know english you know what am i even doing the american culture my external environment is far more pervasive in my life than the indonesian culture because i was at school a majority of my life and all of my friends were english speaking non-indonesians and i was also watching american media and listening to american music and like i said before because i wanted to be an actress i wanted to be like the people that I saw on media. The problem with that is that I never saw people like me in media. Asians in general are being more represented and I'm so so happy for that. But when I was growing up, it hasn't always been that way. Because of that, I there was definitely a point in my life where I hated being Indonesian because there's my dreams, but I felt like I could never reach that dream because of my destiny as an Indonesian. So I felt like the ability for me to reach my dreams, my likability, the extent to which I can be accepted in society, I feel like that was very limited because of the fact that I was born Indonesian. Dan itu sebenarnya gak akurat sama sekali. Walaupun kalian lahir sebagai apa, sebagai apa, kayak kalau kalian mau kerja keras, kalau kalian emang jalannya ke situ, Aku percaya bahwa semua impian kalian itu bisa tercapai. Semakin aku gede, semakin aku sadar bahwa jadi terkenal itu beneran kayak nggak penting banget. Tapi aku masih ada rasa kayak aku tuh orang beda gitu. Soalnya aku tuh minoritas banget. Tapi itu semua change, semua itu ganti. Semua itu ganti. Aku banget sih bahasa Indonesia. Semua kerasaan, kerasaan kayak minoritas itu hilang waktu aku mulai kuliah. Nah, aku sekolah tuh di UC Berkeley. Nah, di Berkeley itu ada club namanya Berkeley Indonesian Student Association. Juga aku ketemu teman-teman Indo baik waktu tahun pertama aku. Dan itu pertama kali, guys. Itu pertama kali aku ketemu komunitas Indonesia yang terbesar yang aku ngalamin di dalam hidup aku. Itu pertama kali aku bisa ngobrol sama orang yang seumur aku pakai bahasa Indo. Lucu aja ya kalau aku mikir soalnya kan aku udah itu aku mulai kuliah kan umur berapa? Umur 19, umur 18, 19 gitu. Di seluruh hidup aku tuh aku nggak pernah ada teman orang Indo sampai titik di situ sampai aku umur 19. Setelah 19 tahun Gila, itu lama banget gak sih? Jadi enak tuh, kita bisa ngobrol-ngobrol pakai Indo Terus aku bisa belajar tentang slang-slang Indo Yang aku gak pernah ngomongin ke orang tua aku Akhir-akhirnya rasanya enak banget sama aku Rasanya seneng banget Soalnya akhirnya aku ketemu kayak tengahan Antara identitas aku di rumah sama identitas aku di sekolah Kayak akhirnya tuh bisa nyatu pas di titik situ pas aku kuliah So, back to English I'm sorry if this is confusing by the way I don't know, it's kind of fun It's been, it's like a mind game, you know? It's pretty fun I was just more active in the in the Indonesian club. I wasn't as active as I wished to all of my Indonesian friends who are watching right now. You guys probably know that I kind of dropped off the face of the earth. But yeah, I mean, during freshman year, I spent a lot of time with them. We volunteered for this one festival at our school called Nusantara. It's an Indonesian festival. It's one day where there's a lot of Indonesian performances and there's a lot of people selling Indonesian food. It's just so much fun. But even though I stopped being super active in my third year, I enrolled myself in a gamelan class. And gamelan is a Javanese, it's also Balinese, but I enrolled in the Javanese instrument course. 
and that was honestly the best class that I have ever taken. I definitely feel like if I hadn't taken that class, I probably wouldn't have ever touched a gamelan instrument in my life ever. Ever since I met all of my Indonesian friends, I just made a more conscious effort to be further in touch with my culture. Yeah, pokoknya gara-gara pengalaman aku itu akibatnya yang bikinin aku mau bikin channel YouTube ini buat teman-teman aku yang non Indo yang mungkin not lagi nonton ini nih terus kayak wah Karen lu lagi ngomong apa sih aku mau pakai platform ini untuk share ke kalian aja culture Indo itu kayak gimana ajaran kita itu kayak gimana aku juga intend platform ini untuk orang-orang yang kayak aku yang orang Indonesia orang tuanya orang Indonesia asalnya itu dari Indonesia tapi udah gede di Amrik sama mereka kemungkinan nggak bisa bahasa Indo atau pokoknya rasanya kayak detach banget gitu sama culture Indo semoga bisa inspire kalian aja gitu untuk lebih mau tahu tentang kebudayaan Indo mungkin untuk belajar bahasa Indo atau mungkin untuk masak masakan Indo jangan under appreciate gitu culture Indo dan juga aku mau platform ini buat semua teman-teman Indonesia aku mau kasih tahu aja ke kalian perspektif aku sebagai orang Indonesia yang udah tinggal di sini selama 15 tahun itu udah lama banget sama semua life lessons yang aku pelajarin aku mau bagi juga ke kalian that being said thank you so much for watching thank you so much for listening i love to meet new friends so please consider subscribing down below and i'll see you guys in the next video bye to start my channel so here i am talking okay i am talking with my hands way too much nyebab penyebab nyebabin Aku gak, aku gak bisa bahasa Indo guys